The latest of our uh, Zoom casts here, and you'll uh, recognize the face of uh, Rocco Mediate, and you'll know the voice, but uh, you get to, to learn who the face is of the other guy here, Steve John, the uh, executive director of the Monterey Peninsula Foundation, tournament director of the Pure Insurance uh, Invitation or Championship. He's got the hat going, and the uh, and the AT and T. Mm -hmm. uh, welcome, guys. Thanks so much for uh, a little time as we're here on lockdown. Good to be with you, John. Hey, Rocco, you and I met uh, briefly a, a couple of times. Uh, one that I think you actually got a chuck out of after you were you were the defending champion at the fries .com. Uh -huh. I was walking in the clubhouse to do my radio show that I've done for a number of years, and you were sitting on the couch outside the main entrance, checking your email, having a cup of coffee, and I said, and, and you were all by yourself in this area, and I said, oh, I guess this area is for champions only. Right. Did I tell you to keep walking or something? <laughs> no, no, you were you just chuckled and uh, and I, I knew I knew to keep on walking because uh, you're in your little sanctum there, so uh, mm -hmm. didn't didn't want to bother you. So uh, hopefully, you had a cigar going. Uh, I Probably not inside. Maybe a little early. It was outside. <laughs> so anyway, it's not. It's never too early. No. Hey, no, Steve no. Rocco, Rocco's uh, played on the Monterey Peninsula. He's got a lot of California history, which you can talk mm -hmm. about. And uh, including the Callaway Invitational, mm -hmm. um, and and played in the Pure Insurance. So uh, I'm sure you got a couple little uh, anecdotes about uh, uh, Rocco, or a couple questions for him. You know, it's it's great when when Rocco commits to the Pure. Now it, it's always a great day because we just know the juniors can have an incredible time with Rocco, <laughs> and then the amateurs as well. I mean, you're you're just you're so easy to play golf with. I mean, every mm -hmm. amateur that's ever been paired with you walks away feeling great comfortable how approachable you are and obviously cigars are always a bonus but no the juniors are, are always they're so excited when the junior finds out they're going to be paired with you and that's such a big moment you know that that mentorship that takes place and you've been so great you played you played very well here at Pebble Beach over the years we're looking forward to seeing you again in September when we get the restart but um, I just want to thank you for all of what you've done for the game of golf and the, and the first team program itself here is, right. is such a great tournament because of that because of the first day but you guys yeah. make it special it is amazing how that's, I mean, how many years has it been now, first tee? 20 some? Yeah, we're, we're 17 years. This it's our 17th year. Because it feels like yesterday they started it. Yeah, um, the program's like 22 years. The tournament's yeah, 17. Some, yeah, but. It, it's amazing what it's done. And then your event, um, it's what those kids have to do to get there. No. <laughs> it's the hardest qualifying anywhere ever. So, and then they have, you know, they're great. It's a, it's a great time. They're obviously. Yeah. They're, they're hey, really do you keep in touch with the juniors? So yeah, we here and there texts and stuff, and neat. we're close with some of uh, a couple years ago. Um, it's just really cool. Yeah. So how is that going to change this year? Where I know a lot of the first tee programs are are yeah. not going to have their summer uh, uh, teaching programs in many cases. Uh, how's that going to change the qualifying uh, for this year? You know, we're looking at all that right now, John. It's 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 the world changing like hourly, minute by minute, perhaps. We're looking at all different scenarios um, at this time, and we don't really know where we're going to end up. We, we we know that the first tee is going to benefit from whatever tournament we put on, in some in some way, shape, or form. We just don't know the format yet where we're going to be. It's going to going to just have to play out a little bit. The first when the tour gets back and going, it's the end of July for the Ally in Michigan, and then we'll have a we'll have a month and a half to watch what's going on. Uh, Rocco, I want to start with uh, with this topic that I think some people may know about your relationship with Palmer mm -hmm. uh, growing up in the area, but you were kind of on the inner circle, like my good friend Bob Ford was. You met uh, Arnie when you were 19, if I read correctly. Mm -hmm. And then I love little ironies of life. You would end up playing with him in his last U.S. Open at Oakmont. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, that's, just, that's just incredible how fate sometimes finds its way. Well, that was set up, but um, I got a call. That's, that's about, a, it was about, let's see, the open. It was about a month before I had back surgery that year. It was, it was um, J July of 94, I had back surgery. But I got a call early from one of the guys saying, hey, we, we, you want to play with Mr. Palmer because you're both from there. And I wasn't playing golf at the time. I was, I was a mess. My back was gone. And I kind of went, yeah, I'll crawl around. So I played Westchester the week before the open made the cut some I hadn't played I wouldn't even walk hardly um and I made the cut somehow and I played and I I played uh 
uh, obviously I played with him the, the first two rounds, but I'd have crawled around that one. There's nothing that was going to stop me on that deal. And he was like a second father. You know, I've known him for, you know, he taught me way more about life than golf. Um, it was that, you know, he, he treated touring professionals to him were a fraternity. No one else gets in. Um, um, no matter who, no matter what anybody says, when he was talking to us, not me, but us as touring professionals, it was a different situation. He really respected that and wanted us to respect that same thing. It was pretty cool because he didn't treat, he treated everybody unbelievable, most everybody, right? But us, it was different. Us, as, as like I said before. Um, and then me, knowing I'm in, growing up five minutes away, it was really different. Um, a lot of knockdown drag outs we had, a lot of them. And of course, he was never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> He was unbelievable. We had so much fun, but he was tough. He was tough. He taught me a lot. He taught me a lot about how to be. So that's how in, I was in the circle there, pretty in the circle. It was, it was a lot of fun. Still yeah, is. That's, really. that's, that's, that's really wonderful. Oh, yeah. and, and talk about how, how's your back now? I know when we see um, you fit playing, as a fiddle. It, it, say it again. I'm fit as a fiddle. <laughs> I got no issues. I'm stronger than I've ever been. I'm fitter than I've ever been. I'm lighter than I've ever been. So um, it's it's, it's, I'm ready to roll. I, I'm 57, but I, I feel 30. So, you know, like they say, age is a number. It's, I don't even know what number it is. I can do the same things I did 25 years ago. You know, when I see you swing, <laughs> I, I love the fact as a, as a golf instructor, I love the fact that, you know, it looks like you're trying to hit a golf shot and not make a golf swing. Right. And, and, you know, you're assessing the situation. All right. What do I have to do here? I remember Johnny Miller once said that somebody asked him how he hooks it or fades it. He goes, I think hook, I think fade, and I see you in that same kind of a Zen mode. Yeah, I mean, you, you know exactly what that means too. Um, we're not, I'm, I'm preaching the choir, but yeah, I, I, was always, I was always able to hit a ball with a stick, didn't matter what ball it was or what stick it was, pretty much. So this golf, you know, golf became fun, and then I decided to try it, and here we are 35 years later. Who knew? That was not supposed to happen. Um, but – yeah, I'm, I'm, I have a motion. My motion is one that's lasted since I started moving back in behind it and going. Ricky Smith and I started that in 86. Laughed, they laughed at us like you couldn't even believe it. I would always say, just watch the ball. Just watch the ball. Just shut up, watch the ball, because go ahead and try that. So we moved. I moved forever. And still guys would go, boy, he sways off it. No, it's, I'm moving into my right side. It's called an athletic motion. Yep. Anything you do, as you know, when you're right, when you're a right-handed person, you go back to your right and up to your left. Simple as that. No one ever stayed center ever in any sport, including golf. They may tell you they did, but if you look, they didn't. So I've always moved easier on the spine, easier on the back, all that stuff. That's why we did it. So so far, so good. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and Steve, I'm sure you know that the time you spend on the first tee at, at Pebble and all the tournaments and the AMs and and the pros. Uh, uh, boy, I bet your, your encyclopedia of swings in your mind has got to be just mind-boggling. Yeah, you, there's a lot of swings out there, as, you, as we all know. But mm. I, I look, I think of Rocco's swing, and it's, it's so fluid. And he's so natural. And that, that's, mm. that's what stands out for me, is when, when someone looks natural, they're, they're going to be more effective. And he's proven that over the years. I mean, tried and, te tried and tested. Rocco, we, we've got to talk about the, uh, the 08 U.S. Open. I'm sure you get... I don't know. Uh -huh. Maybe you don't get tired of being asked about it, but no, not really. I lost, but what are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. well, I you know, always say that. You want to talk about the Open? Open? Yeah, I lost. Next. <laughs> yeah, right. But you know, it's funny. You think of the U.S. Open as a tournament where there ought to be thoroughbreds at the, you know, coming down the stretch. These two great, strong, super players, and you guys were a couple of like wounded warriors. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you with what you've gone through with your back, and again, it was 12 years ago. And, and then here's Tiger with a broken leg. Yeah, I was 120. He had a broken leg, and we just made it look pretty cool. It was pretty fun. No, it was so awesome. <laughs> and you've watched the reruns, I assume. And do you, mm -hmm. you still I've seen them. Get, you still Not get a lot. kick out of it? Well, I, I, I'll, I'll go back and look at swings I made. I won't watch the. I haven't – I bet you I've watched the whole thing once or twice, you know, sitting there watching it. Uh, but I've, I'll, I'll look at certain swings I made and see what's – I look back at stuff I've done since I started to why, what's changed over the years, you know, what, what, what have I done differently over the years? It, it's, it's, it's cool to do that because it tells you stories and um, it, it keeps you going in the direction you, you started to go in. We get off those paths sometimes, you know what I mean? 
um, for some strange reason, we try to do things and it actually makes us worse as you know, exactly what I'm talking about. So, but I look at swing, certain things I did, certain feelings I had, and, and it, it was just really a cool, a, a cool experience for me. Um, for him, it was another tournament. For me, it was not, it was cool. Cause I got to, like I've said a million times, everybody wanted to see the horrid car wreck and murder of me. But that was <laughs> never going to happen. And the people around me knew that was never going to happen ever. Um, unless he, unless someone shot me on the first tee, that was the only way I was going down horribly. Um, and like I've said before, when I woke up Monday, the, I knew in my heart there was no way he can beat me. That's what I thought. Wow. Because of what I was doing with the golf ball. And I had him beat senseless through the air. But that usually wins opens. This, when you're up against this guy, anything happens. And what, what he's done, and you know, I, I, I'm with one of his biggest fans. I, I absolutely love him. Um, he's won a hundred million different ways, majors and regular events, perfect and all over the golf course. And most times opens, you don't get to do that unless you're one of the great ones, which he obviously is the, I think he's the greatest, but um, that's what was the most fun about it. Seeing how, you know, as you look back at it now, you're like, do you believe what no, I, I played about as good as I could play. I knew where my ball was going most of the time. I, I putted pretty good most of the, most days and all that stuff, but, he didn't really know where it was going and he still figured out that it's amazing because if that was me, I wouldn't have finished, <laughs> you know, cause he was off sideways, but they, it's like Tiger said a bunch of times, he said, do you think I care about the last shot? Think about that comment. Yeah. That is an amazing comment because we all do, <laughs> but the great ones could care less about what they did in the last shot. They just keep moving forward. And, and that's, you know, that was a prime example of that. And, you know, you say it was just another tournament for him, but a mm -hmm. U.S. Open at Torrey Pines in his backyard. You know what I mean. It was just another major. We'll say that. We'll say that. Just another major. But, but you know, like Steve, I think you'd agree, like, it's sort of like Phil coming to Pebble for just, just another tournament. But right. when it's in your backyard, you've got history there. Mm -hmm. Those are events where these guys really get jacked up for it. Yeah, most guys, you have a little pressure when they get in their own backyard. Tiger doesn't really have pressure. I think, you know, I was there, Rocco, when you won. And I was there Monday, and, and the, the fans were behind you. You had tremendous oh, yeah. support. I mean, it was it was so cool what you did. Yeah, really it was cool. fun. That was a wonderful It was, it was fun. People say, well, you look like you were having so much fun. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was. Why would yeah. I not have Great for fun? people to see that. Playing Great for against, the fans to see that. Yeah, playing against the guy, the man, in the National Open. Can't hide. They're only out there to watch two people. I can't go anywhere. Of course I'm going to enjoy it. Yeah. Of course I am. And I did every second of it. I, the only thing I didn't do was win. I did everything else. It was a lot of fun. I had a, I had a really, you know, I, I said it before, you, you, you got to see what you had, what, what you learned for your whole career. I did that day. Because I'd never been in the U.S. Open playoff, for that matter. I've contended in a couple opens. But, you know, I've had a couple of top fives besides Tory, but or six, whatever. But my point is, you don't know if what you've done your whole career works until you get in that situation. Yeah, I won tournaments and stuff like that, but not one of these. Yeah. And when I got done and, you know, I let the dust settled, I went, it worked. It didn't fail me. You know what I mean? It didn't, because most time U.S. Open playoffs or U.S. Open losses can take your careers over. If you think about go back through history. You know, if I had a three putt in the last hole, if I'd have missed that three footer on the 90th hole, to lose a golf tournament, I might have been completely done after that. You know what I mean? Or stupid things like that happen. Three putt, the last total lose. What, what, the way I lost in the in sudden death was I just hit it. I just blinked. I hit it a little bit left, dead. That that's different. You know, that wasn't necessarily something that it, it didn't ruin my career. In other words, it wasn't one of those bad mistakes that it's all over. That was just one of those shots that was a little offline. See you later. But it, it took a while to recover from it, but I recovered. You know, your it, fan base I, I grew bad for a while. Your fan base grew a million yeah. X. It really did. It was it became the darling of the of the PJ tour. Yeah, it was fun. And they also All because said, of your attitude. They also said, "Well, you you went out there like you had nothing to lose." And I went, "Excuse me." <laughs> uh, it's the most coveted thing in my world, as far as golf was concerned, is the United States Open trophy. So yeah, I had everything to lose, just like he did. Yeah. You know, so we we both wanted to, you know, obviously have that thing, but um. Yeah, I don't know what would have happened if I'd have won that event. 
I'd have a lot more money, but I don't know if I'd be in a situation, I have a five, almost five-year-old daughter and an unbelievable wife. Now. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'd have done if that had happened. <laughs> I don't know if it had been good or bad, probably bad, but um, it would have been fun to have it. I can tell you that. It would have been fun to see what would happen. Hey, one other amazing performance, and I mentioned the fries.com that you mm -hmm. won just down the road from both Steve and I here. You sank a full shot in each of the four rounds when you won. Yeah. And I, I, I think that's not been done before by anybody. Mm -mm. Um, and, and you just handled it like your humble old self. Oh, I was, well, that event for me uh, took the open out in my head in one way. I didn't want the open to be it. I wanted to do something again before I was done because I was 45 in Tory, and I was 40, almost 48 when I won fries. So I'm like, you know, I don't have a lot of time here with these guys. And all of a sudden that happens. Yep. So it's kind of like everyone says, what's your favorite win? I've had all six wins, but what, what, you know, what's your favorite? Well, fries was, I loved my first one and all of them, obviously, but fries was huge because it was after I lost that open and it, it made a difference for me. I, I feel better about, the, the, the career that I had um, because of fries, because of that event, because I won another tour event, you know, and, and it was just cool because now it's like, that wasn't it for me. People probably don't even remember that one because I mean, obviously the open was kind of huge as far as, because it's the US Open, but I do. <laughs> and your first one had to be kind of cool at the time uh, was a playoff win at Doral, which has always been like in the, in the day was sort of like a mini major. Yeah. Doral. And you beat Curtis Strange in a playoff yeah. right in his heyday. Yeah, we, that was, yeah, that was, you know, you know Rick Smith, who I, I, I've worked with for God, good Lord, almost uh, since 85, a long time ago, um, is now at Doral, Trump National Doral now. He's, he's, he has his uh, teaching academy and everything down there, but, which is kind of interesting because I have the trophy. I put the, we, uh, we put the trophy in. His, it's pretty neat because it kind of circled. He got in there. We, we got him in two years ago. Um, um, but yeah, that was something because Curtis was my, one of my idols. I love the way Curtis played. Then all of a sudden, you know, I got to birdie the last two to get the playoff. Somehow I do. It's Monday. And the funniest thing about it is, and I, I still haven't really asked Curtis this question yet, but I get done and I'm playing with Davis. I make about a 15 further than the last to get in the playoff. Curtis is done. He's on the putting green. Um, so he's away and I make it somehow. No idea. And I'm on my card. I'm, I never won yet. I've, I've been, I, had, I had the West Coast that year. I finished in the top 10 every week. And then I come to Doral. So now I'm in a playoff. I'm playing butt off, right? But I'm scared to death because Curtis is my guy. I love him. But now I got to go. I got to do what? I got to play off. So I sign my card. I'm walking out in the putting green. He beelines right at me. I'm like, what's he going to do? Beat me up? What's going on? I didn't do it. He goes, how far is that putt you made? I go about. 15 feet, he goes, okay. So I, I want to ask him, I'm like, if that was a 50 footer, would you like beat the crap out of me right in the green? What would you have done? I don't know what that was for. <laughs> and then I, I buried the first hole and he, he missed about a nine footer and I made about a six footer to win. I was fortunate that he missed because he didn't miss in that time. But I, I was fortunate there, but yeah, huge, huge. And Darrell was huge back then. First place was, I think it was the biggest purse on tour. First place was 242,000. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It was monstrous. The, 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 yeah. Steve, do you have any uh, uh, course updates for Rocco with, uh, with the pure coming up? Any, uh, any tips you can give him to uh, get him, get him, get him, get him thinking about Pebble? I got to tell you, it has not been open. Uh, it closed Pebble. It's, it won't be open until June 1st. Good Lord. Yeah, Pebble, how pure is that going to be? Oh, my Lord. Last year was perfect, too. I Last mean, year was perfect. It's, yeah, it's um, going to be more perfect. Yeah, I came there. My first time at Pebble was 1985. Do you remember the Wilson Pro-Am? Sure. We used to have? Well, my, my first, my only sponsor, Larry Harrison, brought me out there. And um, um, we, I played Pebble for the first time. Uh, but I don't know what other, I think maybe it was just at Pebble. I don't know if we... No, I think they, they played, I think a spy, I think a spy in Pebble. Maybe Spyglass in Pebble, yeah. But anyway, that was the first time I, yeah. I saw it. And then Pebble was my first tournament as a card carrying member of the PGA Tour in 86. I qualified in 85. So it was my first event. That's, That's when Fuzzy AT&T's first year. That's when Fuzzy won and they rained it out. Remember? Right. AT&T's first year. So I played, you know, my parents come out and 
you know, but I got to tell you this story because it's hilarious. So I get there, I get off the plane in Monterey. I got my, back then I gave you a PJ Tour, I gave you a vinyl like briefcase thing, vinyl with the PJ Tour logo. So I'm getting off the plane. I am golf right now. I'm the greatest player that ever lived. I walk off the plane. I'm 22. Got my little little briefcase and my thing. Get out there. I get to the golf course and my cut caddy L's there. And I said, L, I'm going to take a walk down the range. Remember the polo fields. I'll be back in about a half hour. So now I'm 22. I'm going, I'm going to go look and see what's good. Because these are the guys I've watched. I've never I've seen these people yet. I'm going to go see what's going on. About three and a half hours later, four hours later, I come back. I was like, what the? So I walked down the range and I'd watch Watson, Idol, Lanny, Idol, Norman, Nicholas, Trevino. They're all there. It's 86. Oh, I'm watching them all and I'm go by Watson. I go, can't do that. Down the line, Lanny, definitely can't do that. Every place I went down, I couldn't do anything that they were doing. I haven't hit a shot yet. <laughs> I go inside, I call Rick. Yeah, Rick, it's rock. Yeah. Oh, no, it's beautiful out here. Yeah, I can't wait. We're going to play practice round. But I, I just have to tell you one thing so you can get this going. I have no chance. None. So before I hit a shot, I knew that I had no chance to stay with these guys. I said to Rick, we got to change now. I haven't hit a shot yet. Wow. But anyway, I go play. We played Cypress all those years. And I, I, I make the cut on the number. I made like 1600 bucks, which was great. But I'm, I sat there. Remember, they had scoring up, up there above the uh, – I don't know if they – maybe they still do uh, – up above the uh, stores and everything you know, by the putting green at Pebble. I stayed there for like five hours watching the board because I got done early. <laughs> so I'm watching the board every single – it was hilarious. I made the cut. Then we got rained out. Who would you uh, play I'm with? Winding up. Hmm? Who was the M? Daryl Brown. I played with Daryl. He was Arnold's pilot for a while, and then he married Lindy Firestone. Oh, yeah. They had a place right there by Pebble. They had a place like a minute, not even a minute from the entrance. Yeah. Um, I stayed there. I remember Mr. Palmer set that up for me. You you've, had some great, you've had some great pairings, the AT&T. Oh, yeah. Uh, Maury, Alice. I mean, yep. you, you name it. I've had it. Was I, it goes back to when I started. You're easy to pair with. Yeah. They, they, we, have, we have fun. I mean, it's golf. Yeah. I mean, but not, not everybody's like that. You know, you've got the attitude that's so it, it works perfectly in a pro-am works. Obviously it works well all the time, but in a pro-am you're like the perfect pairing. Yeah. You have to give it, you know, that's what Mr. Palmer basically said. You've got to give it back to him. Yeah. I mean, if they paid it, he, he would say this, if someone paid a dollar to see your dumb ass play, sure they know that you're happy that you're, that they're there. It, that's a look. Uh, what are you doing here? Why are you watching someone else? Because I'm really not that good. You know, you bust them up a little bit, make them laugh. So then they can good come. advice. And, and that's what he showed. He kind of went, make them, give them something for their money. Hello, a nod, anything. Don't yeah. look at the ground. Because he well, you make, I was very shy when I was young. Very shy. Couldn't look at yeah. it. Yeah. You make, it, it makes such a difference. So in the, at the end of the day, it's all about charitable dollars to the community. And, and yeah. experience that a fan has with you mm -hmm. resonates. And it's, it's going to stay with them and they're going to they appreciate it. And that's, you know, that's all we're here for is entertainment. Yeah, well, that, it is. That's exactly what it is. And it's, it's a game. It's, 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 I get paid sometimes to hit a golf ball. Think about that for just a second. <laughs> yeah. So very fortunate. Um, and that's all I've ever, I've never had a job per se, ever. I, mean, I did for like 15 minutes. <laughs> I was done with that. Guys, but, let's fast forward to today. Rocco, what, what are you doing to keep your game in shape? I assume where you live, you're on somewhat of a lockdown and maybe the golf well, courses have closed down. Go, golf opened uh, last week. Well, what, Saturday? What is today? So I, I, we all, we're all losing our days. Tuesday. 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 Yeah. Uh, Saturday, we op everything open. I'm in Hazeltine up the street here um, and then Golden Valley down the street there. You've got Tillinghast and, it's, and, and, and Hazeltine, as you know, Hazeltine. But, um, it's good. It's a little chilly, but it's good. I've been, I, I kept busy the whole time. I, I do my, I bought a little net because I'm usually south at this time of year. Or yeah. playing. Playing. So I just, we just stayed up here for a while, but because um, I don't want to take the low one anywhere or anybody anywhere, really. But so we've been doing what we're supposed to do. You know, I'm doing my stuff that I usually do in the off season, which is still the off season. Are you going to play the ally be your first? Well, they haven't canceled Bridgestone yet. At least not that I know of. And, and yeah, the allies, I'm definitely, I'm playing, I'll play all the rest of the year out except 
for your, I mean, except for, um, uh, <laughs> I, I don't go to Dick's. Yeah. I just don't go to Dick's. I go to Canada and play with a buddy of mine and, and his uh, member guests every year. So that's what I do. But that's I'll play all the rest with that one. Yeah, <laughs> good. Don't be skipping us. I don't want to come to Pebble. What the heck? Don't be skipping us. I can't wait. Yeah, I, 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 miss, I think I missed one year. I think I missed one. Did I miss one year? I think uh, I did miss one. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. I don't remember. It's been eight years now. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. The guy, the amateur partners, to one of Mike Weiner's, one of my good buddies, my oh, neighbor. Yeah. He loves you. Oh, oh yeah. my God. Woo. Yeah, it's fun out there. I mean, it's it's just it's just fun. We well, thanks for all you do for the game of golf. Yeah, it's fun. We we keep like I said, we're, this isn't. No one's ever gone through this. Um, what we're all going through, and no one, you know, I, I've never had forced time off. You haven't. No one has. Right. Yeah. But it's a matter of you know either taking advantage of. It. I think a lot of guys will come out of this as players either better or worse <laughs> you know i'm going to be the on the other side because i haven't stopped moving it since we, we got done but hopefully i am um but it's just it's weird you know we're old and, and what, not like we're 20 true old. because once you once you go back it, it's going to be a big long it's going to be a long run yeah which i like and that's good for you you're healthy but you think I, I like guys are not really yeah. healthy it's gonna be a long run. It's hard, you know. The card thing helps, though. You know, guys yeah. will take cards, which is fine. You know, I always say this about our tour: we put our time in. Okay, yeah. I put twenty-seven on the regular tour. I'm ready. For, I mean, I don't. I take taken a card a few times in eight years, a couple. Um, once because of injury, and once because I didn't want to talk to anybody because I was miserable. So I, I made up. <laughs> I did everybody a favor, <laughs> but um. It's it's a it's a more relaxed atmosphere, as you know, but the competition is just as good as it always was. Fierce, yeah. They want to no win. No difference. If you don't work as much as you did on the regular tour, pack it up. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. over. Hey guys, thanks so much. This has been great. And oh, you got uh, it. Steve thanks, John, John, thank you so much. And uh Rocco, I, I I think of you as one of those few people in, in sports and entertainment that uh you could just go by one name, Rocco, and people will know who we're talking about. It's like Madonna. Yeah, but I, <laughs> that's right. Prince. Yeah, well, it's because it's such a weird name. Of course, we're going to know that guy because he plays golf. And there's only one of me. That's right. Um, so, that's I, so that's fortunate. It's been fun. But yeah, anytime, guys. I'm like Good I said, I don't you. have a whole lot to do. So if, you, if you're bored, need some more, call me. All right, we'll do so. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. All right, guys. Thanks, John. And thanks, Rocco. Rocco. Thanks so much. And uh, right, boys, let me know what you need. I'll all be around. Right. Yeah. All right. See you all down the road, and uh, best of luck to everybody. You got it. All right. There's Rocco Mediate, and uh, this has been Boom. the Big Dog Zoomcast here. So we'll uh, <laughs> be in touch soon. Thank you.